you. Welcome to Feast Week, brought to you by Lowe's. You're watching the Camping World Maui Invitational. Yes, we should be on the islands, basking in the sun, awaiting our final quarterfinal tip of the night. Instead, we're in Asheville, home of the Biltmore and the Blue Ridge Mountains. What a time to be alive as we continue in the nightcap inside Harris Cherokee Center. Stanford and Alabama set to meet for the fourth time ever. The first time in seven years, the Crimson Tide have won the previous seven matchups. The bracket looks like this. North Carolina took care of business against UNLV moments ago. Earlier today, Texas in a thriller against Davidson. Indiana advanced as well to face Longhorns tomorrow, taking care of business against Providence. Great to have you with us as always. With Corey Alexander, I'm Roy Philpott. Whether it's Maui or Asheville, we're happy to be calling college hoops. And Corey, you look at this matchup tonight, you're talking about Stanford, one of the top freshmen in the country, the highest rated prospect in Stanford history, and Zaire Williams. And Zaire Williams is a special talent, great size, the ability to play on the perimeter, can still mix it up on the interior. But as you mentioned, the highest rated a recruit ever at Stanford, the number eight player in the country, according to ESPN, Paul Biancardi, and our group. And Zaire is a program changer. I'm not sure how long he'll be at Stanford, but for the time he is at Stanford, he opens things up to Jared Has going out and getting other elite level players. Important for him to be successful, but you see Jared has talked about the most talented guy he's seen, and he's coached at UNC, he's coached at Kansas. That's very high praise for the freshman Zaire Williams. And his debut coming right here and right now. Year number five for Jared Haas. Great friends with Roy Williams. Considers him a mentor. And more on that as we go through the next couple of hours. Final game of the quarterfinals in the 37th annual Camping World Maui Invitational. For Alabama, John Petty, preseason All-SEC. He can light it up, Corey. He's going to be fun to talk about tonight. He really has, Roy. He, and, and you apparently are his good luck charm. You mentioned before, <laughs> every time you see Petty, he's knocking down about 10 threes, and that's the way that Alabama wants to play. You see 94th last year as far as 35%, but they made more threes than almost anyone. They broke all the Alabama records for three-pointers a year ago, and they're looking to build on that same level of play this season. Contrasting styles, physicality of Stanford, up and down nature of Alabama. Jones outside, that's an offensive foul. And the Crimson and Tide turn a, it over on their first possession. That's a big foul early because Herb Jones defensively most likely will draw the assignment of guarding Zaire Williams. Herb Jones, an all-defensive SEC member, and very important for him to be able to stay on the floor for Nate Oates in Alabama. So getting that first foul early, especially on the offensive on the offensive possession definitely does not help their case. We saw Oscar De Silva for the Cardinal preseason all Pac-12. His outside shot has gotten better. First touch for Williams. And now Bryce Wills. Top of the key. Rebound controlled by Jordan Bruner. Tide will push tempo. Petty jacks a three and he comes up short. And one of the things that could definitely catch Stanford off guard is the fact that Alabama will shoot threes even with you in their face. They don't care about the fact that, that you're there in the defensive position. If you don't have your hands up, they will shoot it right over top of you. The foul as Shackelford corralled it. Nate Oates, second season. Great run at Buffalo. And the Crimson Tide picked fourth in the SEC. And in fact, both of these programs picked fourth in their respective conferences. Crimson Tide 16 and 15 in his first campaign in Tuscaloosa last year. Stanford probably going to the tournament before the season was cut short with 20 wins. Back Aaron. And here come the Cardinal, still in search of our first points. But you see Williams with the ability to lead Stanford down the floor in transition. And when you have your small forward slash power forward with the ability to rebound the basketball and start your offense allows you to play much faster, especially if they're a willing passer. Hooked away by Dejon Davis. Sixth season overall. Was a longtime high school head coach and a teacher of mathematics. In fact, that was his major in college. 
He also prides himself in the fact he worked in construction and Corey said he could come remodel your kitchen or build you a new deck out back if you need it. I respect it. I'm a home renovation guy myself. He says he still has his tools. Got a little more money now at Alabama so he can pay guys <laughs> to do it. But still has his tools if he needs to break them out and remodel the bathroom or something. Quinterly turned it over. The Villanova transfer. It was two minutes in. Still no points for either side. You're understandable for Stanford considering that their opener was canceled. So they have yet to play a game. This is their opener. We see early the touch from beyond the arc, knocking down the three. Pretty smooth. Zaire Williams, a five-star prospect. First shot is good. Stanford strikes first. Shackleford off the bounce. And he'll shoot a pair. So now the challenge for Zaire Williams. Playing college basketball as we get an opportunity to look at Jared Haas in his fifth season now. As a head coach at Stanford, we talked about him at assistant coach to Roy Williams at the University of North Carolina and at Kansas, where he played for Roy at Kansas, a three-year starter, and actually won a Maui Invitational while he was a player at Kansas, I believe 1997. But talking about Williams, one of the things for him, offensively, he's going to be fine. But he's playing the small forward position. In college basketball, oftentimes that means he's going to be guarding a smaller, quicker guy and that could get him in foul trouble. He's got to be very cognizant of playing defense and staying out of foul trouble, staying on the floor. That was his first personal, speaking of the freshman, and he steps out of bounds on the other end. That was one of the things we saw a year ago when the three-point line actually moved back. We saw many stepping back, on the, especially in the corner, stepping back on the out of bounds line trying to get that corner three as Quinterly steps up and knocks down a three and that's one of the areas where he's improved a lot during the year that he had to sit out from his transfer from Villanova to Alabama was his ability to shoot the three always more of a playmaker but you see now being able to stretch the floor with the ability to knock it down from beyond the arc. Crimson Tide have a couple of key transfer players Tell you more about them when we come back. Five to three, Alabama out in front of Stanford. We're back in 30. The transfer from Villanova, Javon Quinterly poured in 18 points as a season opening win against Jacksonville State. Good start tonight as well, Corey. It is in big shoes for Quinterly to fill. Kira Lewis drafted number 13 by the New Orleans Pelicans and who was the point guard last year running ball and oats and now Quinley takes over that position but you see Quinley was a, a McDonald's All-American a couple years ago went to Villanova things didn't work out for him found a home in Alabama but it's not just Quinley you've got so many guys transferring in who fit into what Nate Oates wants to do especially offensively at Alabama and he gives them tremendous freedom especially if you can shoot the three. Petty inside to Jones puts it in seven to three. Herb Jones, one of those Swiss Army Knife type of guys who can do it all. He can score, but he's even better as a defender and playmaker. And worked on his three-point shooting a lot over the summer as well. Williams had a look, instead dishes it out. And on the wing, the three ball is good. That'll make it seven to six. That was one thing Jared has talked to us about this week. Williams is selfless and is not afraid to give it up no matter what the situation may be. And one of the things that you're going to hear a lot about him, and which is so important, especially as we see a nice move on the block, but you're going to hear so much about how much of a high-character person Williams is. Spencer Jones off the steal. Rebound by Petty. Cardinal back in front as Quinterly will pull it out. I mentioned Herbert Jones, the Swiss Army knife, broke his wrist last year in the middle of the season. Basically played with one hand for a couple of weeks and did a remarkable job. Ding up the opposition, making free throws with the working hand. You can buy that. You see Jones getting that assignment. Guarding Zaire Williams, a great rotation, but just a little bit late coming over. Timeout on the floor. Cardinal lead it by one. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Camping World, America's number one retailer since 1966. The Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau, hashtag visit Maui. And Tommy Bahama. Shop for your team gear at TommyBahama.com. Stanford leading Alabama 8-7. Corey Alexander, Roy Philpott back at the Camping World Maui Invitational. A year ago, the debut of Ball and Oats. How about some of these songs? John Petty Jr., preseason first-team all-league man-eater from back in the day, Corey. Kiss on my list. We feature all the top scorers returning. But the defense, Corey, needs some help, doesn't it? That's me, though. I can't go for that. My favorite Hall of Notes song. With Ball and Oats, you make my dreams. And that's the transfers coming in that say it isn't so, of course. Alabama getting the news that they were placed on three-year probation. Not good news for Nate Oates, but it doesn't dampen his spirits at all. Nate Oates still the fiery coach. They're going to go out, try to perform, and win as many games as they can. And he's going to keep recruiting the way that he has to help them get to the point to where he has. It. But Nate Oates has done a great job at Buffalo, but he is selling a product that many high school players love. They want to be able to play fast. They want to be free to shoot the three, and he's giving them that opportunity. Cover your ears, Alabama fans, but he told us yesterday, he was asked, who's your favorite player? And the first words out of his mouth, Charles Barkley. Hey, wait a second. He, he went to Auburn. You can't, you can't play I can't that believe guard you SEC. told on Nate Oates like that. What stays, <laughs> what happens on the Sunday Zoom stays on the Sunday Zoom. You put Nate Oates out there in front of all the Alabama fans. I cannot wait to hear that one lady that goes on the Paul Feinbaum show talking about Roll Tide. Oh, she is going right. to She is coming for you. Paul, Roy Philpott said it last night. By the way, that last three by Reese. And now the bucket gives him his first five points of the season for the stretch four. One thing for Stanford, they cannot afford to turn the basketball over against this Alabama defense because they get out in a hurry. Reese rejection at the rim. The Reese actually led Alabama in block shots a year ago, averaged 8.8 .8 points per game coming off the bench now. But he was an integral part of all the notes a year ago and coming in and paying dividends defensively early. Wills off the mark and put back good. As Delaire connects on his first points. Reese trying to find the hot hand. Tied Reese at 12, entertaining start here. It has been. Reese has the ability to shoot that three ball, so that's one of the areas where Stanford has to recognize when he catches it. He's dangerous from beyond that arc as well. Williams already with one three, give him two. Neither one really grazed the rim. It was all net both times. Hey, great minds think alike. That's one thing I was thinking. Seeing Zaire Williams, two three-pointers go in, all net, and that's a great sign for a shooter. That means you're locked in at the center of the rim, knocking those shots down with confidence. Rojas off the mark, the rebound corralled by Stanford. Here come the Cardinal. John Davis for the point guard this year after Ty Terry was drafted. Off the glass, gets it in nicely. And Davis actually was the primary ball handler before Terry got there, so he's really going back to his natural position. But Terry, a draft pick by the Dallas Mavericks. Shackleford all net from the corner. Really looking forward to seeing Shackleford in this tournament. Had a great freshman season for Alabama. Averaged 15 points per game a year ago. And looking for bigger things as a sophomore. But the freshman getting himself in great shooting position. The form is beautiful. And especially when it touches nothing but net. Great pass by Reese. The left-handed wrap pass to find Shackleford in the corner knocking down the three ball. Tied or three for eight from downtown. Stanford three for four, including two by number three, Zaire Williams. It's Herb Jones with an aggressive finish. He's got four. We're tied at 17. It's one thing you watch Alabama play, Corey, given the quick nature of their offense and a lot of three balls. There's going to be a lot of runs. Bama will go on a 10-0 run. Stanford will come right back. 
I'm okay with that because we got scoring and we got Reese from shooting the trail three with confidence. And Alabama scored over 90 points four times a year ago. So this team wants to get up and down. They want to play with pace. One of the top teams in the country playing with pace, the faster pace. Average only 15.2 seconds per possession. And so Nate Oates, of course, wants to be able to pick that up this season. But it's going to be tough to do when you don't have Kara Lewis, who was a jet, getting the ball from point A to point B. Oscar De Silva from downtown. He's worked on that outside shot. Jared has telling us yesterday he's going to be a lot to deal with when that outside jumper starts falling, and it is in the early going tonight. Reese out of control, but a blocking foul call. Oscar De Silva, the leading scorer for the Stanford Cardinal a year ago, expanding his game to three ball from the top of the key, able to knock it down, stretching the floor for the Cardinal. Spirit of the game lives on. Are you serious? It's time to go to work. What a matchup. In fact, two of them we have headed your way tomorrow with the Blue Bloods on display, Corey Alexander. Let's just you look at uh, how their records have fared in the Champions Classic. I'm curious to see what Kentucky can do after what happened yesterday, but we'll see. Well, Kentucky, once again, is very young. But one of the things that John Calipari is used to having is a couple of veterans to go in with all those young players. And he doesn't have those guys. Olivier Saar, who transferred in from Wake Forest, played for our guy Danny Manning. Olivier Saar, this is his first year at Kentucky. He's a veteran, but he hasn't played for Calipari before. You look at Devin Askew, Terrence Clark, B.J. Boston. Those guys have not played for Calipari. And also, they lost to a veteran Richmond team. Give Chris Mooney and Richmond a lot of credit for coming in with a great game plan. But also, the experience really paid dividends at Kentucky. And you also remember this. Big Blue Nation was not in the building. It is a different place to play when you've got Big Blue Nation in there, 25,000 screaming on top of you in comparison to playing right now where you're playing with no fans. It is a difference maker in college basketball. Sweet look inside off the glass, Keon Ellis. It's a nice pass, but a great cut by Ellis from the opposite wing going in. Beautiful action by Alabama to get the easy two. Inside, Del Air was short. And you mentioned the lack of fans at Rock. We're going to see the same thing at Cameron Indoor, the other great venues around the country. And you got to think on some level, Corey, that's going to lend to itself to more chaos and more upsets as we go through this coming season, right? I believe it will. I mean, when you yeah. are used to getting the, the energy, well, I mean, to get here, at the Maui Invitational, the Camping World Maui Invitational, of course, we've got Lil' Billy all over the place, so it's almost like having a crowd, but that is a difference maker. When you're used to feeding off the energy of the crowd, and that's part of what gives you that energy, but now you have to basically bring your own energy, it's different. And especially at a place like Cameron Indoor, you know, one thing with doing Duke games for the past 10, 12 years and also playing in Cameron Indoor, you know at some point the Blue Devils are going to make a run. And that run normally starts with the crowd getting involved in the Cameron Crazies going crazy. And that doesn't happen this season. And we'll see how that young Blue Devil team responds with that. Zaire Williams back on the floor. Shot clock winding down. Outstanding defense by the tie and a jump ball. It'll stay on this end. Was halfway through our first half. Three on the shot clock. No, Roy, forgive me. I'm colorblind. And Stanford's <laughs> uniform is giving, they're giving me issues right now. <laughs> so, Williams rejected by Jones. So calling a game. On a beautiful, thank you ESPN for this 36 inch monitor that I have to be able to call this game on in this MacBook Pro. But I'm telling you right now, being colorblind and trying to figure out the numbers for the Cardinal is a struggle for me right now. So if I call out wrong names, Stanford, blame it on my eyes, not my heart. The 
Williams with one second on the clock had that shot rejected out of bounds. He did all he could do there, but I'm with you. Had to do a triple take at it as soon as the game tipped off, seeing those jerseys for the first time. Jones I would like turns it over. As for understanding from many of our college basketball fans that watch us on or listen to us on television, watching their favorite teams play, it's also different for us. <laughs> We're fortunate to be able to do this, but it is different calling games, you know, from your office, your home office, your studios, and being able to see all the action going on. So please bear with us. We're doing the best we can and enjoying it. Keith at the stripe after the foul by Keon Ellis. It's almost like a disclaimer that uh, I really appreciate you putting out there as a play-by-play -play nerd. Yeah, well, I really wasn't talking about you. It was more so about when <laughs> I mess up. <laughs> Which was a, co a consistent theme in our first game tonight. I I'm Absolutely. learning more about you. <laughs> hey, the great Terrell Owens said it best. I love me some me. <laughs> I love the fact that you own it so well, too. That, oh, that makes yeah. it I mean, again, it, the problem is those who deny it. See, you can't talk about yourself a lot and then deny it. See, when you know it, then that means that you actually understand what's going on. Here's Jones down the left side, off the glass and count it. A nifty move. A tough take, and one of the things that Stanford's got to realize is Herb Jones is left-handed. So he's gotten to his left a number of times to be able to finish. They're going to have to force him to his offhand going right. Stanford back to work, tied at 21. And a foul on the perimeter. Quinterly, the transfer from Villanova. You asked Nate Oates an interesting question yesterday about Quinterly. And the, the basis of the question was, is, is he more substance than style now? And I, I guess it sounds like that he's starting to turn the corner to become more of the kind of player that he can be based off of what he was in Philly. Well, Nate Oates says that he's gotten much closer to substance now than he was. He's not still, he's not all the way there yet, but Javon Quinterly, of course, is one of the innovators of the Jelly Fam. And if you don't know about the Jelly Fam, look it up. It's all over the internet, social media craze, but it's simply about layups, a.k.a. finger rolls at the rim that had a tremendous amount of style to it. And so it was a huge thing. Everyone, you know, in the younger generations running to the rim yelling Jelly. But that does not translate very well to college basketball, especially in the eyes of coaches. And so Javon Quinterly, I believe a lot of his struggle at Villanova had to do with the fact that that wasn't okay with Jay Wright. He had to be more about substance than he was style. He had the opportunity to sit out last year, watch Kira Lewis at the point guard position, recognizing how he needed to play for Nate Oates. And I believe he got a lot of that out of his system and had a great opening game, 18 points for him, shooting the basketball very well. And I believe he will be really good in this system playing for Coach Oates, but Coach Oates had an opportunity to sit him down, talk to him about just that, and I believe he got his point across. On the bench currently with two personals. Tied with possession. Bruder will trigger. Check that Jones on the pass. With Petty tried to step back. Couldn't get the real estate off to get the jumper in the air. Give Stanford credit. Five the the shot clock. Covering up that three-point line. And a great play by Herb Jones. But Stanford did a great job running Alabama off the line. You can see Jared has, has his guys prepared to be able to take away that three-point shot, which is so important for Alabama, and make Alabama make hard twos to have to beat Herb Jones up to the task in the last possession. Trying to feed the post, nearly stolen. Shot clock under five, off glass and count it. Big bucket for Stanford. Cardinal back in front by two, and that was Bryce Wills. And that's my guy, Bryce Wills, who has the ability to play one through four offensively and defensively for the Cardinal. That's one of the areas where they're really good because of their versatility. When you look at the length with Wills and Zyra Williams on the perimeter, they have the ability to switch defensively and a number of guys that can get in the stance and guard Wills with the point guard ability getting into the paint and unable to finish, but you see the ball handling ability. Nice move there, unable to get it to go down. Shackleford thought about it from deep. 
Crimson Tide, three of ten from downtown so far. You can tell Shackle from Watson. Runner is good with a bounce. Nicely done for number five in white. Shackelford, who made 84 threes a year ago for Alabama, a freshman record, showing his ability to be able to get to the hole, not just a shooter. And that's one of the things that you normally work on over the summertime in a normal summer, a non-COVID summer, but you can see Shackelford impressive still adding to his game. Zaire Williams with another bucket. The mid-range jumper was there that time. Cardinal claimed the loose rebound, the loose ball rather, that was Spencer Jones. A good start for the freshman, Zaire Williams. Highest rated signee in Stanford history. Herb Jones as well, both players with eight. And we've got a good one brewing. The nightcap, in the quarters, the Maui Invitational. Pisgah National Forest, base of the Blue Ridge Mountains, Asheville, North Carolina. Beautiful hiking, wonderful trails, streams, and a great time of year as the leaves have already changed colors. Beautiful part of the country and happy to be here for the Camping World Maui Invitational. Asheville, great downtown area, vibrant breweries, all kinds of things to do. And this part of the world, Corey Alexander, Roy Philpot. Good game here already for our next cap is the a, quarters. Asheville is a basketball city. I can remember playing in the D League, and Asheville had a team. Joey Meyer actually coached that team, and they were probably one of the most attended G League cities that we went. I'm sorry, D League cities we went into because they always had good crowds at their game. I can remember Brandon Knight, little brother of Stanford yeah. legend, Brevin Knight, playing on that team. And, but Asheville always showed up big time for those games. And, you know, in the D League back then, you played each other eight times, so that's four games in Asheville. You got to know those fans pretty well. Yeah, the old Asheville Civic Center, which is now called the Harris Cherokee Center. Jump ball there is De Silva with an aggressive move. He was tied up. Rojas met him right there in the painted area. Winner of this game will get North Carolina tomorrow. Tar Heels handled UNLV after trailing 13 to nothing right out of the gate. Led by seven at halftime, rolled in the second half. Roy Williams emptied his bench. De Silva left open top of the key. Petty the board. Well, DeSilva's shown us that he can make that three now. Averaged over 15 points per game to lead Stanford a year ago and expanding his game. Preseason All-Pac-12 performer. This Stanford team has a chance to be really good. You know, in year five for Coach Haas, I believe he has his pieces in place now. Plus, you add the could be a superstar, Zaire Williams. They've definitely got a chance to make some noise. Lair thought about it. They also have a five-star signee in Harrison Ingram. So, Corey, it's the first time in Stanford history back-to-back -back classes that featured five-star prospects. Wednesday on ESPN and the app will have the 26th annual Jimmy V Classic. Number one, Gonzaga takes on West Virginia at seven. Then it's a top five battle, Illinois and Baylor. Both games taking place at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indy. You want to talk about Sonic Blockbuster. What a way to start the season. A couple of top 11 teams getting after each other. Tell you about starting the season. Jalen Suggs, special. But point guard for Gonzaga right now, off to a great start, great college start so far. And I'm sorry, Zag fans, but you only get one year. I'm telling you right now, so make the best of it. And I'm not sure if you know, Jalen was a high school quarterback. He was special on the football field. I believe his cousin or uncle is Terrell Suggs, who played with the Baltimore Ravens. And Jalen was special on the football field, really didn't concentrate as much on basketball in high school. And so, right, you see now him just concentrating on basketball and you see how special he's been for Gonzaga to start this season off. And 
Those guys are really good, say the least. Max Merle, a couple of free throws. That foul went against Herb Jones, his second. Lead is four for Stanford. And now a zone shown by the Cardinal for the first time. Petty Quinterly. inside, good luck. Quinterly back in the game with those two fouls right now. Nate Oates recognizing that his team struggling on the offensive end of the floor, getting his floor general back in the game, trusting him to play in foul trouble. Well, you mentioned those 18 points he scored against Jacksonville State. That came on his birthday, no less. Thought it the best birthday he's had. Been waiting for a year, transferring in from Villanova. Inside and short. Putback is off the mark. Here come the Crimson Tide. It's Josh Primo, another freshman. And a quick trigger for Josh. Now almost three minutes since Alabama last scored. You know, we talk about Alabama and their three-point shooting, but they were only 7 for 31 against Jacksonville State. I know Nate Oates wants to see his team shoot better, but it hasn't been a lot better thus far. Here in Asheville, as Quinley gets to the rim and gets the goaltending call. But right now, Nate Oates not happy with the pace of play, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that Stanford is scoring. And so when you can't get stops, you can't run. And right now, the defense is where the Alabama really has to pick it up. If they want to be able to get out in transition, they're going to have to stop Stanford from scoring. It's hard to run when you got to take the ball out of the basket. Alabama, Corey, you mentioned it, replacing Kyra Lewis, who was drafted in the first round by the Pelicans, one of the, the fastest players I've ever seen in person in college hoops. They go back to, to Ty Lawson, who we talked about earlier tonight with the Tar Heels. He certainly stands out, but Bama replacing him. That's a big loss. Trying to figure out a way to recover that offense as O'Connell drops in a triple from the corner. Michael O'Connell, freshman out of New York. Yeah, huge loss, losing Lewis. And, and boy, I, I learned something as Quinterly gets another bucket, so inserting him back into the game has been positive for Nate Oates. But I learned something about Kyra Lewis that I don't think many fans know. When Kyra Lewis came to Alabama, he was 17 years old. Right. Because he was so young, after his freshman year, he could not go to the NBA. Because you have to be 19 within the calendar year that you would play in the NBA. He was actually too young to be a one and done. So he had to go to college for two years. And I'm sure most basketball fans don't know that I had no idea that that was actually a rule. But you have to turn 19 within that calendar year. Devin Booker played in the, in the NBA at 18. Guys have done it, but they turned 19 during that calendar year. Kyra Lewis would not have done that, so he could not actually be a one and done. Yeah, good stuff there. It was more, and he shot the ball and he could drive the ball, but I would think Quinterly in the backcourt is more of a, a scoring option. Lewis was just so fast, made it look so easy at times. I believe Lewis was also the leading scorer for Alabama a year ago to go along with <laughs> being that jet pushing the offense. And now he has the opportunity. I'm, I'm excited to see he, Kyra Lewis going as fast as he does down the floor, throwing the ball up in the air for Zion. That's going to be fun watching the Pelicans. That's going to be fun. Yes, it is. Last foul win against fun. James Rojas. That's his first. And that'll put Delaire Brandon. at the stripe. Brandon Ingram just got paid. Congrats to B.I. Well, coming up tomorrow night, ESPN and the ESPN app, the State Farm Champions Classic. Top 10 clash, Duke and Michigan State from Cameron Indoor. That's at 730. And then later on, Kansas and Kentucky. KU, UK, the time is now. Number seven versus number 20. And talking about Duke, Coach K continues to produce guys who make a lot of money playing in the NBA. Brandon Ingram, Jason Tatum, both signing huge extensions in this very short NBA offseason. And right now, the Stanford Cardinal holding a five-point lead over the Alabama Christmas Tide. Stanford playing at their pace. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball.
Brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays, and Burger King. Mix and match your favorites for just five bucks. Kevin Connors, Danny Manning, Sean Farnham. E-Trade Halftime Report is on the way. We'll show you how North Carolina rallied from 13 down to blow out UNLV. As for our game, Sean, Stanford is a star in Zaire Williams. How's the fit so far? It's pretty good. They're learning how to play with him. It's not as easy as you would think. I remember Baron Davis when he came in. We had guys that won national championships. Learning how to play with a guy as talented as that, it's difficult, but I think they've done a good job so far. They sure them. have, and I really like what we talked about earlier, how they're subbing them out around the TV timeouts, giving them a little extra rest because he's going to play extended minutes. Smart coaching there. Hey, Roy and Corey will also show you the head coaching debut at Iona of Rick Patino coming up at the half. Oh, we look forward to that, KC. That sounds good. And you guys talking about Zaire Williams. 12 minutes so far, eight points, a couple of threes. And he has looked silky smooth so far as the five-star signee living up to expectations. Still early. And, Corey, I'm, I'm curious, your debut at Virginia, Ooh. were you nervous? Oh. oh, very nervous and not very good. <laughs> Zaire Williams has scored <laughs> double the points that I did in my debut. I only have four points in my first two games. Oh my. At, at Virginia, but I tell you where my breakout game was. We played Georgetown in the ACC Big Ten, ACC Big East Challenge. I had 16 points against Alonzo Mourning and those guys. Hit a big three in overtime to win. Then came back and had to play against the Trail Sprewell, Robert Ory, James Hollywood Robinson, with Wimp Sanderson on the south sidelines at Alabama. We didn't win that game, but I played well. No. <laughs> oh, wow. What a great story that is. Big you know, shot, Bob. When you, when you look back and recognize that Alabama is the second winningest basketball program in SEC history, and you have to go back and think about what Wimp Sanderson was able to do and the talent that they had. I mean, Jason Caffey was on that team who won rings with the Chicago Bulls. Roy Rogers, who was my teammate with the Denver Nuggets, I mean, they were loaded. And then right after that, Antonio McDice is coming in. I mean, Alabama was stacked with talent back in those days. Largest lead for Stanford at eight. Zaire Williams, a perfect three for three from bonus land. Now attacking. And a fresh 20, Stanford will set up the offense. Williams with 11 points, looking sharp. Five rebounds and three dimes already. Inside and another bucket, an easy one. And it's, a small thing. it's a small thing, but you don't want to help. When a guy's three for three from beyond the arc and you know that he can shoot it that well, you don't want to help. So you don't see a challenge for the Silva at the rim. He gets the easy dunk because guys are scared to leave their man on the perimeter. John Petty rejected. He is scoreless so far in this first half. My Wills wants it, takes it, and was fouled. He'll shoot the one and one. First on Josh Primo. Roy so Stanford had Corey. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I had an opportunity to coach Bryce Wills at the Nike Elite 100 in St. Louis. And he actually was more of a point guard at the time. But, and we had a loaded team. I mean, the Elite 100 is pretty much loaded. I can give you. A list of guys that were just on my team alone, Wendell Moore Jr., Josh Christopher. I mean, we were Bryce was we were loaded, and that was just one of the teams there. But Bryce Wills was the one guy who really took the challenge defensively and took it personal in stopping the opposing team's best player. And so it's no surprise that he's actually an all Pac-12 defender and continues to be a staple in this lineup with Coach Hat. And that's the book on Wills, his athleticism, his defense, all conference in that category a season ago. Williams sizing up another shot. The mid-range is there. Give him 13 in his debut. Nine-nothing run for Stanford. Reese can't connect. Shackleford fell down. Back to the Cardinal. Well, we talked about Bryce Wills and his ability to defend, and you see great size going up and getting that on the glass. Of the end of the floor, it's Zaire Williams knocking down his 12th and 13th points on the evening. And 
for the Cardinal fans. Recognize you have a star in the midst. Stanford in control, leading by 12. Forty-one twenty-nine. less than a minute to go. Zaire Williams, 13 points, six boards, three dimes. He can shoot it outside. He can take you off the bounce, Corey. And that's, that's NBA range, but also look at the footwork, getting the inside foot down, raising up over top of the defender. We talked about the great size, 6'8", but the shooting stroke is what makes Zaire Williams so, you know, what was going to make him <laughs> so admirable by NBA scouts. His ability to be able to defend as well and, you know, a high character young man. He is putting on a show right now in his debut. And again, I ask the Cardinal faithful to enjoy these next few months because I believe this is all you will see. Zaire Williams in a Stanford uniform. Three-pointer off the mark. Shot clock is off. Williams controls. Here comes Stanford. An impressive opener for the Cardinals so far. And perhaps putting the rest of the Pac-12 on notice and the rest of this Maui Invitational as well. And Petty, the block, will close down the first half. Now Alabama just 3 of 15 from downtown. Stanford taking advantage. 6 of 9 from bonus land, led by the freshman, Zaire Williams. Halftime report coming up right now as we send you to Kevin Connors, Danny Manning, Sean Farnham. Guys. Boy, thanks very much, America. You have just been in. Welcome back to Feast Week, brought to you by Lowe's. And you're watching Camping World Maui Invitational. As Stanford closes down the first half of the nightcap on a 9 nothing run here in downtown Asheville. Christmas lights are on, and the Cardinal are on fire as we get set to begin our second half. They started with Bill Walton and Jason Benetti. It ends with Corey Alexander and Roy Philpott. And Zaire Williams, the freshman, the five-star, has been phenomenal. He has been better than advertised to start the game, knocking down the three that touches all net, and then once again, touching all net from way beyond the three-point arc. Off the screen, a little bit of rim on the last one, but again, getting on the, on the move, off the dribble, his ability to pull up. Shooting the basketball is an art, Zaire, Zaire Williams has that art in his game. 13 points for him in the first half, five for nine, shooting three for four from beyond the arc, and seven rebounds to go along with it. Leads his team in all those categories. Special young talent we're getting to see in the Stanford Cardinal. Well, speaking of threes, Camping World is participating in the Plating Change Initiative with a Plating Change three for three. For every three-point field goal made, Camping World will donate $3,000 to provide free meals for those in need. Money will be distributed to organizations in Maui, focused on feeding the hungry, and to restaurants in each school's local community. Thank you, Camping World. You saw the three threes by Zaire Williams. He matched Alabama as a team in the first 20 minutes with those three-pointers. So we'll see if the Crimson Tide, Corey Alexander, can get on track because they ended that first half in ice-cold fashion. Well, as you mentioned, three for 15 from beyond the arc, Alabama, with that being such a staple of what they do on the offensive end of the floor, they can't afford to go out and not shoot the ball well. So getting the ball inside on the first possession, first offensive possession for them of the second half, an opportunity for the three-point play. Nice pass by Herb Jones. And you see finishing through the contact. And Alabama going to go to Bruner, who's trying to find a way into this offense. But right now, Alabama struggling from beyond the arc. I'm sure there's something that Nate Oates didn't want to put too much pressure on his team to make shots. But in their first game and a half, they have not been the three-point shooting team that they were last year. Lead is nine after the three-point play. Cardinal back to work is Davis controlled. I believe a kickball was called. Herb Jones does a little bit of everything for this team. Eight first half points. Block a couple of assists. Jared Hass. Now he said something interesting to us yesterday. He said, Corey, we're getting old, which is a good thing. That's the first time I've ever heard somebody reference the word old and good. But it makes sense. Who was he talking to? 
I know when he said we. He's not talking about me. He was talking about his team. The experience oh, okay, okay. is there. <laughs> I was just All right. No, it's a great thing to be old in college basketball. That's when you have success, when you have veteran players. And again, you want the, the, the young talents. You want the Zaire Williams, but you also have to have veteran players to go along with it. And Jared has talking about getting old. He's younger than me. So again, if he's talking about he's getting old, he's got to be talking about me, and I'm not having <laughs> <laughs> Bruner with the foul. That's his first. Just underway in our second half. Winner of this game will get North Carolina tomorrow. The final quarterfinal game of the Camping World Maui Invitational in Asheville, North Carolina. Here's Williams, the step back. A rare miss. Tap to Jones. Big possession now for Alabama. Shackleford. High off the glass and off the mark to Silva controls. But Cardinal will push the pace. Jared has told us yesterday we're going to be faster and play faster than we have in recent years. And you saw that there with Davis. So we go back to Alabama's first bucket, Corey. Well, Alabama wants to try to find a way to get easier baskets. And you see on the perimeter, the lane is empty. There's no one there. And so you get the ball into the hands of one of your better playmakers, which happens to be really your foreman, Herb Jones. And by doing so, he gets the ball inside to Bruner, who's able to finish through the contact and put three points on the board in the first offensive possession for Alabama. But with the threes not falling, Nate Oates trying to go to different looks to try to find a way to put points on the board. But... It's going to be defensively where Alabama is going to have to climb back into this game. Can they stop Stanford is going to be important. One of two for Davis at the line. And what do you do for John Petty to try to get his stroke going? Because he is still scoreless. He had 14 in the season opening win against Jacksonville State. Preseason all SEC and he has been held in check so far. Well, you know, to Stanford's credit, they respect the shooter. So when you respect the shooter, you don't leave John Petty and give him opportunities to get easy looks. It means that someone else is going to be able to play without getting help on the defensive end of the floor because Petty's man will not leave. And if his man's not leaving, he's not going to get those easy three-point looks or even contested three-point looks because the Stanford defender is there on the catch. Davis with the intent to jam. It goes in and out. Somehow gets it back. Puts it in and a chance for three. So talk about hard work, strong effort. Dejon Davis showing you a little bit right there. But Dave is not happy about the fact that he missed the dunk. But you should be happy. Not only did you get to pad the stats, you got an offensive rebound, you got the basket, and an opportunity for a third point. So, again, sometimes things work out in your favor even when you make a mistake. Taking over for Ty Terry. Corey, you mentioned that he ran the point before Terry got there. And Jared Haas telling us yesterday it's a kind of an increased sense of urgency for number one in black tonight. Open look for Bruner from the wing. That's a big shot. And let's see if that gets Alabama's offense on a roll. And Bruner can do that. A first team all Ivy League performer at Yale a year ago and had the first triple double in the history of Yale basketball. 14 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. So he goes along with the skill level that Nate Oates is looking for for all five of his players to be able to make plays not only for themselves but their teammates. Part of the reason why they run the five out offense. Williams, elbow jumper, first points of the second half, given 15 overall. Zaire continues to impress, but he is not getting sped up. Regardless of the defense, he's getting to his spots. Great footwork, elevating over the defense, a 6'8 frame. He's, no one is even in the picture when he's shooting the basketball. It's just him in the rim because of that size and that nice release on his shot. It's a bit of a thrill seeker. We mentioned this, I believe, in our first game, but Zaire claims to be the best jet skier in all of college basketball. Yes, I said jet skier. That's something you see a lot of in the sport. Considering that the majority of the country is not near water, <laughs> I think that's a smaller pool of participants in that contest. It's the J there. When's the last time you jet skied, Corey Alexander? You know, I haven't been on one probably. Is that Petty? That's is that Petty. Petty knocking First down jumper. the three. Okay, we've got Petty going now. 
Back-to-back -back threes for Alabama on the offensive end of the floor. But I haven't been on a jet ski in, I would, I would guess, 20 years. Used to be my thing back in the day. Okay. Uh, but um, not as much of a thrill seeker as I used to be in my younger day. Davis hit the deck hard. After Petty's three and Zaire Williams, 15 points in his debut. There he is on the jet ski. Look at that. Pretty confident, too. Well, I tell you what. If he can drive that jet ski with his feet, then he is the best <laughs> jet skier in the country. Oh, graduation. Come on. Showing up at graduation on the jet ski, or was that just flexing in his cap and gown? The answer is yes. Many of these young people, especially the class of 2020, were robbed of actually being able to have a traditional graduation, so making up creative ways, and I like the creativity. By Zaire. Cardinal back to work, leading by nine. It's a nine nothing run at the end of the first half to create separation between these two. Here's De Silva, first team all pack 12 off the mark. Betty taps it to himself. Here come the tie. A little behind the back and Shackelford on the pass. I think Williams was called for the foul. Reaching over the back. So the second on the freshman. Glad to see John Petty get off the snide. I like John Petty, big fan of his. When he, way back in his team Penny days where Penny Hardaway was a grassroots Nike EYBL coach, not the coach for the Memphis Tigers. John Petty, one of Penny's best players, along with P.J. Washington, who's now starring for the Charlotte Hornets. Can you believe Five that? straight. Training camp starts tomorrow. NBA training I camp cannot. starts tomorrow. No, that that doesn't sound or feel right considering LeBron just cut down the nets. Feels like a few days ago. So Williams you just go pull LeBron. You, <laughs> just, not the Lakers. <laughs> just just LeBron won it all by himself. Huh? <laughs> I mean, AD was pretty oh. good, right? How do you leave Penny wide open and he didn't shoot the three? I'm surprised by that. He. Putback is there. That's Quinterly. Alabama now starting to make a run. And a timeout called. 49-42, our score. Crimson Tide trying to make it a game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Home for the holidays. What a time to be alive to visit your next Camping World location, the large American flag out front, and America's largest RV dealer. Locations around the country, your one-stop shop for everything RV and outdoors. That there, Corey, is a recreational vehicle. You know you want one, and you reminded us that you needed one back in our game earlier tonight. Well, well hold on, Roy. So I'm in Statesville. You're in Greenville. We need... I need an RV and two tents for myself. I need an RV for Monty Williams, and I need a tent and an RV for Rasheed Wallace. So <laughs> where is our local camping world? Because I'm sure they're going to comp this for us. Where do we go pick <laughs> these up? Asheville. Asheville, baby. That's where we're going. That's how we're going to get it done. There we go. Out of the timeout. Alabama back in it, trailing by seven. Stanford back to work. Nice ball, man. Open look. There it is from downtown. And Bryce Wills knocking down the three. And again, that's one of the areas where he was he struggled his first two years at Stanford, but put a lot of work in this summer shooting the basketball. And you see it paying off. And of course, the Cardinal shooting in the tennis facility. Earlier in the year, they were unable to get into their arena in their practice facility so they got into the tennis facility put up some hoops and worked on their shooting aggressive finish at the rack stanford extending its lead bryce wills back-to-back -back buckets he's got seven and bryce wills is the recipient of the long pass but he also came up with the deflection which most college coaches chart 
deflections during a game and Wills is being very active on the defensive end of the floor and it's turning into acti activity offensively for him as well. Shackelford in and out, Petty. Lost the handle, here comes Stanford. Cardinal have been the aggressor so far, led by a freshman and a senior in Oscar De Silva, who's quietly putting together a strong performance as well. And a foul. That'll be the third on Quinterly. Bryce Wills getting out in transition, showing off his athleticism. Put your head in the rim, young fella. That's when you know somebody has bounced. So you got to look at where is their head in relation to the rim. So you see a lot of guys going out dunking Roy, and they use an all arm. Again, that's not bounce. Bounce is when your head is close to the rim. That's when you know there's true athleticism. Foul on Petty. It's Williams hit the deck. Feels like you're referencing my Kenny Smith story from our first game earlier today. No, no. Kenny had bounce. I'm a big fan. Of Kenny, okay. Kenny Smith had All bounce. Right. I give it to you. I was just saying that dunk wasn't that difficult. You got me in trouble because Kenny texted me after that <laughs> and, and just hit me with the come on. He's going to now make me run the hill in L.A. the Thank next time you. we get to go back to the Nike Basketball Academy. Who knows when that is? But now I got to run the hill, and you got me in trouble for bringing that up. Wills feeling it, the spin, and a finish with a bounce. Nicely done in traffic. Bryce Wills starting to heat up the junior from White Plains, New York. And if he becomes a double-figure scorer for the Cardinals, that makes them even more dangerous because he's going to be on the court because of his ability to defend. But if he can be a double-figure scorer on a consistent basis for Coach Jared Haas, Jared Haas, he is really going to help this team when you think about what all they have, the attention that Zaire Williams is going to garner, there's going to be an open floor, and guys like Bryce Wills will have the opportunity to take advantage of it. Largest lead for Stanford on the strength of an 8-2 run, and really Bryce Wills getting it done. If you're Alabama, what do you do to try to break up the rhythm of this game? It just feels like Stanford imposing its will and just finding a way to do what it loves to do. That's play defense and be physical. Delaire with the steal, and he was fouled. But one thing you can't do is continue to turn the basketball over, and that's one of the areas of concern for Alabama thus far. 11 turnovers to only eight assists. And when you're giving away possessions and you're down 14 points, it's impossible to come back. Alabama has to handle the basketball better and not give easy points to Stanford because the Stanford team is good enough already to manufacture points, but also they're doing a much better job on the defensive end. Jaden Delaire with four. Make it five. Played in 31 games a season ago with one start. They expect him to play more on the perimeter this campaign. Rebound by Rojas, Alabama in search of offense, and this would be the guy to do it with the ball right now. On cue. And it's been that kind of night for John Petty. With the difference with that shot, it was John Petty having to make an individual move and create a three-pointer in comparison to his teammates being able to create one for him. He's a much better catch-and-shoot guy than he is going off the bounce. John Petty, who made 85 three-pointers last year, shot 44% from three-point range, leading the SEC. But a lot of that had to do with the fact that he had a guy like Kara Lewis who was creating shots for him. Off the carom. Bucket good by James Keith. Lead is 17. Keith the rebound. 12-2 run now for the Cardinal. Injected fourth in the Pac-12. Year number five for Jared Haas. Well, you mentioned earlier their season opener against Utah Valley last week was postponed, and Jared Haas admitted yesterday, not sure what we have. We haven't had live scrimmages with referees. It's kind of the great unknown, but this performance with a freshman leading the way Awfully impressive. It'll give the rest of this field a lot to think about if the score holds up these next two days.
absolutely will. Bryce Wills getting his, his junior year off to a good start, knocking down the three, and then getting out in transition, putting his head in the rim as the Cardinal are in control. Actions in the Asheville area, the Biltmore, America's largest home, botanical gardens, and a beautiful time of year, especially around Christmas time, the lights get put out. But really, all year round, one of the great tourist attractions in the state of North Carolina, the Vanderbilts built the incredible Biltmore House. Almost as big as Corey Alexander's back, the Maui Invitational. And great to have you with us tonight. 59 42, our score, the Camping World Maui Invitational. Stanford out in front of Alabama. I'm Roy Philpot for the debut of Zaire Williams. It has gone really well for the highest rated signee in Stanford history. On the bench currently, 17 points, lethal from three. And I think the one thing, Corey, I would say about him too, he hasn't forced the action tonight. Game has come to him, not forcing up shots or trying to make incredible passes. He has been under control. You're absolutely correct. And, you know, you have to think about the fact that he played on a loaded high school team last year. B.J. Boston, who's starring at Kentucky right now on his team, Ronnie James, you know, so, so many stars, and it was loaded. So the, the, the lights aren't too bright for Zaire Williams. He's been in this situation before. Even though this is his first college game, this is not the biggest game that he's played in. And so for him, you know, it's just – Kind of like going out playing another basketball game. He hasn't been sped up. He hasn't been too high, doesn't get too low, just understands how to play basketball and what his strengths are and plays to his strengths, not his weaknesses. Shackelford hit the three off the turnover. The Crimson Tide give it right back. Stanford capitalizes, and that's Bryce Wills again. Now, see, up 14 at that point, I would have expected a windmill from Bryce. Okay, you get out, no one's chasing you. I understand. I mean, Stanford is a, a conservative group. I'll give them that. They're a little more conservative. <laughs> but when you get out there, it, it, you got you to gotta get out there and give me a windmill right there and see great job defensively stepping in. I would love to tell you who that was, but I have no idea whose number that is. Jaden Delaire. <laughs> Thank you. Tried to step and in. So, and so with that stepping in and that, well, maybe his foot was on the restricted arc but it look, looked like a charge. I was too busy trying to figure out who it was in comparison to where his feet were. Again, blame it on my eyes. Maintain possession and we'll do that. Approaching the halfway point of the second half, Bruner attacking. Nice pass. Getting caught in no man's land. Quinterly can't finish. Rojas comes up with a steal for Bama. And a blocking foul, no bucket. And Roy, if Rojas. you would have told me that Stanford had the same amount of turnovers as Alabama, I wouldn't have believed you, but it's actually both teams have 12 turnovers. It seems as though Alabama's turnovers have been much more glaring and turned into fast break points on the other end of the floor for the Cardinal. Now both teams in the bonus. That'll put Rojas at the stripe, one of two at the line this season. Former junior college All-American. Set out last season with a knee injury. He'll get the bonus free throw. It was interesting, Nate Oates said yesterday, he's actually one of our five best players. Just the rotation against Jacksonville State in the opener probably prevented him from being more active. He scored eight points, grabbed seven boards. So I'm curious to see what the rest of his season looks like. One of the problems when you have with that is who do you take off the floor to get them on the court? <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's the thing. There's only 40 minutes to be played, five guys, that's 200 minutes to go around. And so when you look at it, you know, we know how important Herb Jones is to this team. We know how important John Petty and Shackford are. You need Quinley at the point guard position. And so Bruner, with the experience, we talked about a first team all out Ivy League performer, grad transfer coming over. Who do you take off the floor to get more minutes? And that's always going to be the challenge for most coaches, especially when the talent difference is not that big. One thing for certain for Stanford, he knows Zaire Williams is going to be on the floor because they don't have another guy like that. But for Alabama, many of their guys are similar. 
And so therefore it makes it difficult to know when to play who in what spot. The second foul on Spencer Jones as Bruner goes to the stripe. He's perfect there and just one attempt tonight. Nate Oates the first to contact Jordan Bruner when he entered the transfer portal as Zaire Williams back on the court. Graduate from Yale, you're doing something right, and Bruner's certainly going to add something to this Alabama team. Tied to have their work cut out for him, trailing big. Swatted away, Bruner. And Bruner fortunate to get back, gambled on the play, got beat, but did a great job recovering back and coming up with the block shot. That's the type of defensive effort that Nate Oates wants to see from his team. Unfortunately, he hasn't seen much of it for the first 30 minutes. Shot clock under 10. Beautiful cut and finish. I believe that's the third dunk for Bryce in this game. He's showing off his athleticism, showing off his new jump shot. 11 second half points for Bryce Wills. And he's had himself a nice debut to his junior season. He scored eight of the last 15 for Stanford. Bryce Wills, all Pac-12 defensive team a season ago. But you see what I was talking about before, boy. Bryce Wills now running the point guard position for the Cardinals. Extremely versatile player and continues to add points to his offensive total. We know about him as a defender, but he is bringing offense to year three for the Stanford Cardinal. Going back door on the first possession, showing off athleticism, dunking at the rim, and then using his ball handling ability, going to that left, able to finish through the contact, an opportunity for the M1. Second foul on Rojas. Wills now with 15. And you can see it in his body language. You mentioned where he was running the point the last couple of possessions, and he's got a little bit more of a swagger to him than even what we saw in the first half. Short on the free throw. Shackle for the rebound. Lead is 19. We've talked about John Petty struggles with Shackelford hasn't, I mean, he's scored 10 points in this game, but three for 10 from the field, two for four from beyond the three-point arc. And again, this is a young man that Alabama is going to rely on heavily. Throughout this season, average 15 points a game as a freshman. Right now, Shackelford looking a little banged up. That's his third court. foul as well. You know, one positive for college coaches that have, has come from this pandemic. With them wearing masks on the sideline, you cannot read their lips. You can only imagine <laughs> what is being said to some of these players at times. <laughs> but you will never know because you can't read their lips with the mask on. The Silva, the stick back. An all Pac-12 performer living up to the billing early on. Their season opener. He's got 11 points, seven boards tonight. And over the back, a foul call. We were talking about it earlier, maybe even at halftime, where, Corey, you posed the question, or I posed it to you in the first half. No big crowds at Rupp and Cameron Indoor this year. That could negate the home court advantage at some of these venues. But also for the officials, you wonder, will we see as many charge calls without the crowd there to implore them on at times? And not that that is something that's a significant factor, but look, we're all human. And the well, lack of crowds and atmospheres could could impact his veteran officiating crews on occasion, maybe. You're absolutely correct. And the calls will still be there because the plays will be there for the for the officials to have to make the call. But what you will lose is the level of emphasis that you see on each and one every one of those calls. With a big crowd going, if you have a, a young man come in and for a monster slam, but there's someone stepping in the way and they get their feet on the on the restricted area circle and there's a posterizing dunk, do you have the emphatic block call? Or do you have the emphatic charge call going the other way because there is no crowd? 
there to influence the officials. I'm not well, going to say the crowd influences their decisions, but it does influence their level of emphasis. Is it Teddy Valentine or someone else? Well, his initials are TV. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, again, you know, Teddy was built for this. He yes. was built for TV. And apparently so is Zaire Williams. Here's Teddy Valentine. Who Send it to Stanford yeah, and Spencer one that, Jones inbounds it. You know, the one of the struggles is the fact that you don't have a bench to be able to really talk and bond and have the conversations on the bench that you normally would in a college basketball atmosphere. You know, right now you have the benches separate. You have at least six feet social distancing from each player's chair, from the coaches, etc. And it makes a difference. And right now, we're seeing the Stanford Cardinal having their way with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Well, tonight's play of the game, driven by Continental Tires, actually plays, if you want to look at it that way. If a little Bryce Wills is good, Corey, more is better. Bryce Wills having a spectacular season opener to his junior year, getting out in transition multiple times, showing off his bounce at the rim. More importantly, knocking down jump shots and getting to the cup, showing off a full offensive arsenal. And Bryce Wills having a strong debut to season three for the Cardinals. Wills. 13 second half points. Rest of the team has scored 17. And somewhere, Bill Walton is smiling, screaming the phrase Conference of Champions. I can just hear him right now as the Pac-12 flexes here at the Camping World Maui Invitational. Well, we'll hear it tomorrow when Bill Walton is calling what looks to be Jared Haas going up against his mentor, Roy Williams, in the second semifinal game where Stanford will take on North Carolina tomorrow. Bill Walton and Blue Ridge Ranger, a.k.a. Jason Benetti, will be on that call. <laughs> Good look inside for the flush by De Silva. And it looks like Bryce Wills may have caught a cramp or he's calling to the bench for a sub. Definitely something going on with his leg staying down. And again, the offensive game, glass and the putback. Yeah, first game of the season for the Stanford Cardinal, not knowing what to expect. But right now, Bryce Wills, we've talked so much about playing so well, asking for a sub and immediately going to the bench to get some attention to that right leg. Well, you mentioned Jared Haas and his relationship with Roy Williams. I mean, he went in depth about that relationship yesterday with us. He said he's unbelievable. This is Jared talking about Roy. We have a bond that will last forever. And you just don't hear that spoken a lot, even between two great friends. But he considers Roy Williams a mentor, a friend. And he said he means more to me than I can even put into words right now. Look at Jared Hassan, Roy Williams back in the day. I can remember seeing Jared on many of the recruiting trails, still see him on the recruiting trails at Stanford, but more so when he was at North Carolina as an assistant for Roy. And very appreciative. And Jared was one of those guys as a player that I'm sure Roy Williams knew would be a coach. Roy Williams coached Jared at Kansas as a player, but you know, soon after that, Jared was an assistant coach for him at Kansas. And you have certain guys that when they play for you, you understand that they're most likely not going to be professional basketball players, but you understand the way that they work, their work ethic, how hard they play, and their understanding of the game. And these are people that you want to work for you. And I believe at Kansas, they had a, a stat, a floor burn stat that was pretty much created because of Jared Haas. And so, you know, when you're that type of guy, and, and Haas, I believe, was playing alongside Paul Pierce, Ray for the friends, an extremely loaded Kansas team. And those guys went on to be, of course, NBA players and professional basketball players, while 
Jared has stuck around with Roy Williams and now because of that is coaching the Stanford Cardinal an opportunity to play against his mentor tomorrow. One of two at the line for Ellis. Herb Jones on the floor for Bama with four personal fouls. Lead is 20. Off the pump fake, the easy finish inside for the Cardinal. So Merle the hoop, his second. And it's certainly looking like a Stanford-North Carolina matchup tomorrow. And at this point, we've already seen Wills go out. It seems though he's getting some attention to that right calf, most likely a cramp. With a 24-point lead, do you start to rest your guys knowing that you have a game in less than 24 hours against a team that wants to get up and down the floor? Do you use these remaining five, you know, five minutes plus to save some of the energy of your players, or do you trust your second group enough to be able to maintain this 24-point lead and ensure that you get the win? Well, I want to get Williams more experience because you told me earlier he's only got a couple of months in Palo Alto before he goes to the NBA. So I want to see more of number three. And he's got 19 points, eight boards, and three assists so far tonight in 26 minutes. Chance for three now for Bama. I want to see more of that guy. He, he's a lot of fun to watch, and he is a cool customer. Well, you want to see more of it as a fan. <laughs> That's and correct. Play-by-play play, play play <laughs> analyst, you get to talk about him. But if you're coaching him and you recognize what level of energy he's going to have to exert in less than 24 hours playing against the Tar Heels, it becomes a point to where you say, okay, young fella, you've had enough for the night and see Bryce Wills back into the game. Coach Hass going to keep his foot on the pedal. I'm going to worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Let's see what that's, else. That's, al that's almost like saying hindsight is 2020. <laughs> those now those sayings are similar. Second time tonight we've seen a player step out of bounds on that corner three. As Merle is a guilty party. You assume Stanford goes on to win this game. And there's still five minutes left for a team that loves to shoot the three. It's Rojas is off the mark. But you got to think this does a world of good for Jared Hass, Zaire Williams, and the rest of this program. Looking at North Carolina at 4 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN. But a good table setter in your season opener to do this against a team out of the SEC that is thought to finish in the top four of that conference. Yeah, and when you come all the way to Asheville to play in this tournament, you're playing against quality teams. Alabama's going to be a good team. I, I, I'm a believer in them and Nate Oates and their system. I don't think they're going to have a lot of games where they shoot the ball this poorly from beyond the three-point arc. I think that they're going to be a tr team that's trending up as the season goes along. But this will be, you know, if they're able to hold on to this lead for the next 5-15, this will be a good win for Stanford. An opportunity to play an even better opponent tomorrow in the North Carolina Tar Heels, ranked number 14 in the country. Sweet move by Rojas, basket of count. That last foul was on John Petty. Only has seven points tonight. Lead is 19. Now full court pressure. Be extended by Nate Oates and company. Williams lost the handle, it pops out to Jones, three on two. Shackle for the runner. And Wills dribbled that one out of bounds. Now coming up tomorrow, the exclusive reveal, the brand new college football playoff rankings, top 25, Reese Davis and company will break it all down for you top to bottom, seven o'clock Eastern, ESPN, also streaming live on the app. All presented by Capital One. And a timeout on the floor as we step aside to the Camping World Maui Invitational. 4.50 to play. A lot of great young talent around the country to start this 2020 season. Zaire Williams right now projected. It's a lottery pick in the top five. B.J. Boston, Kentucky. 
Rick Brown, Texas, and a host of others. Corey, what do you think? Well, I'm fortunate to know most of these guys. And what's going to be interesting this year, and it's a different year because you see Kay Cunningham at number one, Jalen Green at two, Evan Mobley at three, Jonathan Kaminga at four. So Kay Cunningham and Evan Mobley both came to college, while Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga both chose the D-League route. And so, sorry, G-League route. So when you see this year's draft, it's going to be interesting to see what NBA teams value most and that will be an influencer for the young players coming up in the future, the Chet Holmgrens, the Imani Bates, the guys who are next up coming out of high school. Do they choose to come to college and have the opportunity to come on air and have Roy Philpott talk about them for 30-plus games throughout the season? Or do they decide to go to the G League and play against grown men? And again, some may do well because of it, but and some may not. There's a number of things that will get exposed playing against professionals that may not get exposed playing in college. So this year is kind of an experimental year. Um, I mean, 2020 has been <laughs> different, to say the least, in every aspect. But it's going to be different. The 2020-21 class is going to have a different option to look at coming out of high school and also entering into the draft. Three-pointer good. Spencer Jones, second in the Pac-12 in that department a season ago. Over two and a half per game. He'll grab the rebound on the other side. When I was talking with Paul Biancardi, the director of recruiting, college basketball at ESPN the last couple of days, getting ready for the Camping World Maui Invitational. He talked about the level of talent coming out of the last recruiting class. As good as he's seen, arguably, in the last decade or so in Stanford, the beneficiary, North Carolina, who we saw earlier tonight also benefiting as an offensive foul call. More on that when we come back. Less than four to go here in the nightcap. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Camping World, America's number one retailer since 1966. And by Wicked Weed Brewing, drink different. And Asheville, North Carolina. Visit exploreashville.com. Hey, plan your mountain getaway. A beautiful day. Well, just about everywhere around the country as Oscar De Silva just fouled out. Still a good start and debut in his senior season. As De Silva, 13 points, seven rebounds tonight for that last offensive foul. Corey Alexander, Roy Philpott talking about talent, mock drafts, and where Zaire Williams could fit in all of that. We mentioned this earlier, too. Stanford has another five star coming next year in Harrison Ingram so if Williams career the farm is short lived we'll see another elite talent to the heart of the Pac-12 next season you mentioned it being a beautiful day out most of all, throughout most of the country have you been outside today I have it was crisp clear sunny oh, good for you I haven't been outside since Saturday <laughs> I'll be completely hey. honest. I was on Zoom with Bill Walton all day yesterday and preparing for games and everything going on today. I haven't been outside, so maybe I'll step out tomorrow. I hope so. Maybe go to my mailbox. That's, that's probably not a bad idea. We were all in Walton's world yesterday on eight Zoom calls as Darius Miles pours in a three from the wing, and you saw Zaire Williams exit the court so it looks like his night is done under three to play I'd say it's a pretty good debut for the five-star Corey I would agree with you on that and right now so <laughs> Jared, Jared has has trusted his reserves to be able to come in a 19 point lead now this is the time where coaches get on edge and you let your reserves know if you go in here and you're not playing hard and you're not playing well, I'm taking you out. You don't let the, the starters and your top eight guys unlace their shoes. <laughs> you keep them ready because 
19 points. Can evaporate quick. It is 2020, right? No, it takes off the pump fake. Can't finish at the rack. The rebound to Darius Miles. My God, Noah. Getting some minutes at the end of the game. He's going to be really good at Stanford, by the way. Knockdown shooter. Big fan of Noah Tate's. Bishop Gorman. Well, don't forget, coming up tomorrow night, ESPN, the ESPN app, will have the 10th Annual State Farm Champions Classic. Michigan State and Duke in a top 10 battle at 7.30. Then later on, Kentucky and Kansas. Number seven versus number 29.30 tomorrow night. Sonic Blockbuster returns. And approaching two minutes to play here. The other thing on Zaire Williams I find interesting, actually his first career sport that he played was soccer, and he was a goalkeeper. And you think back to some of the all-time greats that play basketball, Kim Olajuwon is one. Grew up playing soccer in Africa. Really helps with your footwork, but Footwork was impressive tonight, as was his outside shot court. Yes, it was. And, you know, I talked about his footwork a number of times, especially off the dribble. His ability to pull up and shoot the jump shot, part of the reason why he is at number five right now on the ESPN, I'm sorry, on the NBA mock drafts. But a lot of it has to do with the fact of how you get into your shot and that soccer footwork. But one thing that I always talk about, and I ask this question, because I'm not, I'm not big on soccer. To be completely honest with you, Dallin Cuff is my soccer guy. As we as we look at Zaire Williams, and you see that footwork getting into a shot off the dribble, and then the ability to finish on the break, but more importantly, the inside foot getting to his shot, squaring his shoulders. But do you have great footwork as a soccer goalie? I mean, is that something where you have to? I, mean, I can see if you're in the field, but do you have to have great footwork as a soccer goalie? at that young age and he is our player of the game brought to you by Tommy Bahama of course the 19 points eight boards three of five from bonus land if you're playing goalie you're also playing on the field a little bit but yeah I, I think it makes sense because you're using your feet your legs to kick the ball you got goal kicks he's doing a little bit of all of that so I'm sure he played multiple positions but starting out as a goalkeeper it you see that I think translate and a lot of elite level athletes when you start out playing soccer it just it helps the footwork it, it's not rocket science it's just kind of how it works well forgive me for forgetting her name but the young lady who was first to play in an NFL I mean in a college football game Sarah Fuller for Missouri and Sarah is a soccer goal and she has great footwork or at least she has a great foot I don't know <laughs> I know I know she can kick when I'm very happy for her excited about Missouri and the fact that she was able to get on the field and play well it was at Missouri but she plays for Vanderbilt but I, I'm with you oh she's Vandy oh I was barely paying attention to that game I was just waiting to see if she's gonna be on the field and honestly I just watched the first half and she didn't so Vandy so great that's, moment that's even more interesting because of course the Vanderbilt family who built the Biltmore it ties into Asheville which ties into Maui. It all comes full circle. Now. I, I didn't know where you were going with that, but you somehow saved yourself there at the very end. That was miraculous and well done by a veteran broadcaster. As the great Chris Tucker once said, I do what I can do when I can do it. <laughs> well, in all seriousness, a great moment yesterday, or on Saturday, rather, as Sarah Fuller, the second half kickoff for Vanderbilt. And uh, it was something I talked with my two daughters about. They were excited and a very cool thing to see and a, a nice step forward in many ways. Less than a minute to go. And unfortunately for Vanderbilt fans, or maybe fortunately, of course, they, they fired their head football coach the next day, Derek Mason, who was a one-time assistant at Stanford. Big win for the Cardinal tonight. Great debut for the former five-star Zaire Williams as it'll be Stanford at UNC tomorrow. And that game's going to have plenty of intrigue. Some stories will be told with Jason Benetti and Bill Walton. Jared has Roy Williams connection, which we've talked about some tonight. There's Josh Prebo, another talented freshman at the stripe.
Coach Chas said something interesting to us this week as well in getting ready for this game and talking about quarantine. About 212 days where they weren't able to practice or do much of anything. They put up shots in the tennis arena to try to stay fresh and work on their skill set. But he said, I can't imagine another team in the country who is more thankful to be playing this year who is also as low-key and as humble as we are. And I think that has translated very well tonight, Corey. Well, he has to be excited about his first viewing of his team playing against outside competition. And they have definitely passed the test today. Look forward to seeing that matchup tomorrow against North Carolina. And that'll just about do it. 82 to 64, our final score as Stanford and head coach Jared Haas cruise to the victory. The final quarterfinal game of the day. It'll be Stanford and North Carolina tomorrow, 4 o'clock on ESPN. Texas and Indiana will get things started at 1.30. That'll do it for us tonight. For Corey Alexander, I'm Roy Philpott saying so long on the Camping World Maui Invitational. Warning.